Well, hello there, spiritual prayer warriors, eagles. I have several things that I want to share with you. Uh, one of them being a vision. This vision that I had was during a time of prayer. And as I was just praying and seeking the Lord and doing wonderful prayers, the anointing came on me and I saw something in the spirit, just like that. The spiritual realm was opened in front of me and I saw this dark spirit. It was a devious lurking spirit, secret spirit that was moving through the United States. And I heard the voice of the Lord say this, there's a deceiving voice hidden in the social and political unrest in America. It rides on fear, fear of violence, fear of being rejected and persecuted, fear of being wrong. The deceiving voice is a spirit that impersonates wisdom. But it's not my wisdom, for I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Pray for my children in America who have believed the lie disguised as wisdom that my hand has been removed from President Trump. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to announce to you that there is a deceiving spirit. It is a false voice of prophecy. It is a false wisdom of light that is invading not only our nation, but the body of Christ in our nation. Now, I won't win, but we're just exposing what's going on in the secret and bringing it into Revelation. Do you realize how much of that that is still going on. The Lord spoke to me a year ago and said that he was bringing things that were hidden into the light. There is a revealing and, and that it will continue and that judgment will come upon those who have the spirit of Antichrist. And that's still happening today. But uh, in 2 Corinthians 11.3, Paul said, but I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve, by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted. The craftiness that deceived Eve and Adam, we got to throw him in there, was a craftiness, a guile, a deception that made them believe a lie. And that thing that's going on behind the scenes is a direct attack upon the body of Christ. It's a direct attack upon the one who has the hand of the Lord on him, President Trump. So we are praying for this election. And I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, by my faith, and by third heaven authority, I speak it into the atmosphere even now, that Donald Trump will win his second term as presidency of the United States. I'm just speaking that into the air. It's a proclamation of faith. One of the things that I shared with you last week is that I asked the Lord. I said, Lord, is it an absolute that President Trump is going to be reelected? And he said, no, it's not an absolute, but it is a command that I put upon the body of Christ to make sure that it happens. And so that's why we're praying. We don't just lollygag. We don't sit back uh, and just go with the flow and think that everything is sure so we don't really have to put any effort into it. We put effort into it. But let's get back to this prophecy because it was something that the Lord spoke to me to reveal. And some of you may even say, well, that, that of course, I mean, you can see it going on. There's a deception. But here's the point. I saw in the spirit while all this was going is that there were a lot of believers whose faith was beginning to teeter, beginning to fail them because of the lie, because of the deception, because they're bombarded by the far left news media. They're bombarded by the high places of Jezebel, you know, and her prophets that are spewing her doctrine from the far left into the political arena, the judicial system, 
into the education system, into the media, into the entertainment structure and system in our nation, and, and how that is coming forth and is beginning to cause a lot of people to doubt or to wonder. And so the Lord wanted it exposed. Let me, let me tell you these two stories real quickly. The very first year that I went into the ministry, in fact, it was just a few uh, months into full-time ministry, and I was sitting at my desk praying, and I opened my Bible, and I was reading, and I was praying in tongues, and, and I was just enjoying the time from the Lord, and I heard a voice. There was an impression that came to me. The impression was a little bit different uh, than what I normally had heard before, but what it did is it took me from the Bible, from Genesis all the way through the Bible, scripture after scripture. It would just give me these scriptures, speak them to me, and I would go through, and then it laid out what is actually a false doctrine that's sometimes called the, um, the serpent seed doctrine. And that is that Satan mated with Eve to produce Cain, and then Adam mated with Eve to produce Abel, and that's why Cain killed Abel. There are various forms of that serpent seed doctrine, but it's false. But it was it just laid it all out, and it was just amazing to me. And I pushed my Bible back, and I sat back, and I said, Lord, can this be? Is this real? And the Lord spoke to me, and he said, you've just heard the false voice of prophecy. And I heard another voice come on the inside of me, and this is the one I was familiar with. It was the voice of the Holy Spirit. And he took me back through the Bible, starting with Genesis, those scriptures and other scriptures, all the way through and unraveled the deception that the enemy had tried to place upon me. He was working my mind. And then the Lord said, now that you know the false voice of prophecy and the true voice of prophecy, you won't be deceived. He said, there is a deceiving voice disguised as revelation, but it's not true. Second experience that I had, three decades later, I was in a situation where CK and I were the leading pastors, prophets of a ministry with associate ministers, others in leadership, and a very important decision had come that we had to make. And in my heart, I knew what the Lord was leading me to do. It was something that was not only going to impact the congregation, but my ministry, CK's ministry, everything in general. And, and it was an overarching decision. The right decision had to be made. So I sought counsel. The Bible says that there's wisdom and the multitude of counselors, but those counselors have to be listening to the Lord. And so the counsel that I received from this leadership group just didn't sit right with me. I don't think that they had heard from the Lord, really. They were going by pressures. They were listening to some second heaven stuff, the atmosphere that was coming. It wasn't the right decision. But yet, this is the decision that was being made by leadership. And so I went home, and I wrestled with the Lord all night. And in the middle of the night, the Lord came to me in a dream. And in the dream, he showed me this tall light fixture, kind of like a fluorescent tube fixture. It was about six feet tall and about six inches in diameter, and it stood vertical, straight up. And around the light, a beautiful light, there was this vine that swirled down from the top to the bottom. And I looked at that, and before my eyes, the vine turned into a serpent. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me, and he said, what appears as wisdom is not always wisdom. There is a deceiving voice of wisdom. And he said, you must still discern by the Word and the Spirit what my wisdom is. And then he said, you make the decision, and then you tell them what's going to happen. And I did. If I had not made that decision, 
I would not be doing this video tonight. Why? Because I wouldn't have moved to Las Vegas. I wouldn't have made the major decisions that were necessary in the steps in getting to Las Vegas and being on the internet, all of the things that are going on right now. It would have derailed me. The Lord would have worked things out and eventually, you know, got me back in the, in the right track and grace, but it would have set me back. And I'm so glad that I listened to the Lord. So what I'm saying is that you've got to listen to your heart. You've got to submit it to the word. You've got to submit it to what the spirit of God is saying to you. But be careful. Here's the point. What I learned from those two encounters and other things that have happened over the years is that the false voice of prophecy that came to me first and then the false wisdom light applied pressure to me. They were an agitation. It was a demanding that I believe something that I really did not subscribe to. It was not the spirit of God. It was trying to pressure me, entice me, lure me, deceive me into going a different direction. What I'm saying is I saw in the spirit when I had this vision, a lot of believers in America that were wrestling with whether it was wise because of their fear, because of the turmoil in the atmosphere mostly, but also the turmoil in our nation, because of everything that's all the voices that are going on right now in the, their campaigns in this presidential election that's coming up in, in just a little less than a few months. And they're beginning to be swayed. If you're one of those, I ask you, don't give in to the pressure to think that the wisdom of the day is to elect somebody other than President Trump. I guarantee you. Now you have to make up your own mind whether you believe me. I understand that. But at least in your heart, consider that God's hand is still on President Trump. God wants him to be reelected. He needs to finish the assignment upon him he needs to continue as an outsider, draining the swamp, disrupting the status quo in Washington, D.C. that has robbed the citizenry of their control of our nation. Jezebel, the ruling political spirit of Jezebel, the ruling political spirit of Pharisee, see, they need to be have their power broken. Jezebel is an antichrist spirit. She's a hate Trump. Pharisee is a never Trump. And we must pray for President Trump. But do not allow the enemy to deceive you. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every single person watching this video. I pray for those that they know who are friends or family members who are in that group of teetering because of the pressure and the fear and the guise of false wisdom and of false revelation. They are false voices of prophecy, pressure and fear applied to change mind. I rebuke that and I pray that the Holy Spirit would bring revelation into every one of their hearts now. Give them a vision, give them a dream, a revelation. Show them through a television show, a book, a just anything that the Holy Spirit can do to bring them to the place to where they snap out of that witchcraft. And that's what it is. It's witchcraft coming against them in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Also, I wanted to mention that there are three prayer helps that we posted on the website. Many of you haven't got them yet, but 
If you're inclined to do so, you'll notice on the home page of our website that there's number one, a daily prayer leading up to the November election. You can download that on your iPhone, the PDF, or you can print it out. There are two others. There's a daily prayer agenda, and this will help you in just going through your prayer time and structuring it, getting the most out of it. And then there are daily prayer keys. And, and the daily prayer keys, things to remember through that agenda and through that daily prayer. We're going to be praying around here. I know you are too every day up until November 3rd for the election. I pray for you that your faith fail not. I pray that God will protect you, preserve you, give you wisdom and insight, and that you will have the spirit of wisdom to not only make good decisions for your life, your family, your ministry, but also to know how to answer every man who questions you about your faith in general and your faith in Jesus Christ, but also your faith in President Trump. So God bless you and visit our website. Like I mentioned, it's wordoflifeworldoutreach.org. The link is in the description below this video. And while you're there, consider becoming a partner of the ministry by logging on to the secure donation page.